welcome back to my IH channel. If you're a new subscriber, let me know in the comment section down below how you found me. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for tuning back to see my face. And as y'all can tell by the title of this video, we're doing another installment of my newest addition to the channel, an analysis done by a regular person. Okay, um, if you aren't aware, I do this based on just my experiences, my knowledge. Um, I'm not you know, an expert in movie, film, cinema, scripts, or anything like that, like everybody else you see on the YouTube. This is just a regular person doing analysis on a movie that she watched or a show that she watched. So yeah, without dragging this on too long, let's get into it. And hopefully it's not as long as my Georgia and Jenny analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure you guys leave me feedback on this video and the last one just to let me know things I can do better on because I'm always trying to find ways to improve. Okay, I'm dragging it. Let's get into it for real. <laughs> grab the glasses because i gotta be able to read my notes okay so as y'all can tell by the title of the video we're doing moxie a netflix original movie following a young girl named vivian and her in her high school experience basically her journey with being a feminist fighting for um girls at her school so let's get into it y'all already know the deal we're gonna do characters um dynamics dialogue and yeah so the first person I have on my list, I kind of just, oh wait, before we do get into everybody, I need to preface this by saying they did a Hawaiian theme party in the movie and I found it completely disgusting. Hawaiian people's culture should not be a theme for your party. It's very weird. I don't like it, especially when they were forced to not practice their culture for such a long time and they're just now getting back into it. Well, they never lost it completely, but yeah. Keep those as your movie. Hawaiian anything, like, no. Unless it's a native Hawaiian person throwing an authentic luau, there should be no reason y'all talking about Hawaiian party. That's trash, especially because of how the U.S. came to ad adopt them into the U.S. Like, no, adopt. Well, we really know they stole, they, they, they kidnapped the queen and forced her hand to sign a treaty because she wanted to save her people. But that's not that type of video. Make sure you do your research on Hawaii. Make sure you donate to the actual natives. Support them because we got people like, what's his face? The dude from Facebook trying to build a freaking, um, whatchamacallit on their land when it's not needed. So, yeah. Let's get into it. I will, like, try and find some links and petitions and articles to include in the conversation because it is something that we don't really talk about. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Let's get into it for real. First person I have on my list is Lucy. Lucy is a new girl at the school she's a as far as i can tell a monoracial black girl which i really enjoy with beautiful box braids in her hair she seems to be dominican i don't I'm not sure if they really specify but when talking about her culture she did mention bachata which is a dominican original on um, like genre of music so i really love seeing that and i love that they incorporated that into her character and they like let you know in subtle ways like you know and she was just a bad bee. like that's just what it was she ain't never had an ugly day period from day one she was letting y'all know what it was she was stepping on y'all neck she said y'all not gonna play me y'all not gonna play me at all and she was the catalyst to our main protagonist vivian stepping out of her comfort zone and you know starting this whole moxie movement okay and honestly i really did enjoy the um the movie i didn't think it was bad there were some parts i was kind of like eh. um but it was overall good um i feel as though one issue i did have with it because it was so focused on feminism which is a great thing it really didn't include the intersectionality of it all they might have made like a little mention of it but it didn't do much because the experience of a black woman compared to a white woman is different even though they're both women they're different races of women that include different set of problems so i felt like they should have better incorporated intersectionality because she deserved it better than that um yeah but her and anna they had a little moment at the little was it a party or a dance something they had their little moment and like they just kind of skirt past it like it didn't happen after the scene and i was like did it not just happen? Well, whatever. Two black girls, her, they do, they do. Okay, like, here we go. I know that's right. Okay, next person I have on my list, I kind of just wrote the characters as they like stood out to me. Okay, so Mitchell, he can rot, he can go six feet under. Literally, every single point I had is rot, rot. A black friend, his black friend who was a follower, can, um, he can rot again. 
And then I hope the door, the, 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 the devil personally tortures him so he can rot some more. Spitting in someone's drink because she don't want you. You can never have a bad beauty like her. Never. Never in your life. Like, he's the epitome of a white man who thinks he's, I don't, like, it's just like every time he came on screen, I was pissed. By the way, he looks like Jason from Pretty Little Liars, but, no, well, Jason wasn't all that neither. You know what? Whatever. I just, oh my gosh, his character, like, fueled a, a different type of rage inside of me. A different type of rage. I just, like, there's no way. And, and it, I think it fueled a rage, a rage inside me because I know there's someone out there in the real world who acts like that. I know there's somebody in the real world who acts like that. And there's going to be a black girl suffering with his domestic terrorism. Like, I know it. Not even just a black girl. I'm probably an indigenous Hispanic girl, a native somebody's tor people people are being tortured by that man in real life i know there's there's them out there there's a couple of them out there i just can't i hate him next we have the the principal i thought she was the counselor maybe it's my bias or whatever because you know principals are usually male my bad on that part that might have been my biases but she can also rot but she i'm gonna say it like not to get too racial or whatever, because the movie is about more femininity than it is racial prejudice or whatever. But she was acting very much like a white woman and aiding and embedding a white man who is doing evil deeds. That's literally what she was doing. So she can also raw and she can choke for coddling him. Like, oh, trigger warning, there is going to be mention of sexual assault in this uh video so if you are uncomfortable i will say it before i begin talking about it but as for now it's not going to be mentioned just yet but yeah yeah she she got the same point she can rot she can rot she can rot and her slut shaming caitlin the girl who had um large breasts for wearing the same thing as somebody who had a different top the same exact top on but had smaller breasts that's literally american school system in a nutshell that's literally it and it's like, why are you even looking at a minor's tatas? Why is your eyes wandering there? And the teacher too, like, yeah, he showed support towards the end. But like, why did your mind even go there? Like, oh boy, oh boy, what? Oh boy, what? Why would your mind even wander there? Why are you even looking in that direction? It was giving a lot from TVD. Y'all know, enough said. Okay, um... I, and then she tried to be like, oh, when um Lucy went to go talk to her in the main office, she tried to be like, I'm a girl, I understand. I'm like, you're a grown woman. And you're excusing the, the actions of this boy who is soon to be a man and will continue this toxic cycle of torturing, harassing women. And you will continue to aid and coddle him while more women are added to the statistics of being sexually harassed. <sighs> moving on from her then we have vivian who is our main protagonist um the movie begins with her and her mom at home basically showing their dynamics and first things first um vivian has no backbone like she might have did what she did at the end by telling the truth of she was the one behind all these moxie magazines or whatever so essentially you know she made these magazines and these blues letters that she would leave in the bathroom for people to pick up and each day she would have everybody do something write stars on your hands to show support or wearing um spaghetti strap tossed the support of caitlin who was slut she was dress coded and things of that nature despite another girl wearing the same exact top yet not being as curvy or a guy wearing the same exact thing um yeah she literally has no backbone up until the very last end but even then it didn't do it for me because i felt like a like i don't know i just felt like i wanted her to be from the get-go yeah it's me it's me and what but she wasn't and then she invalidated lucy when lucy was talking about the her whole like after what's his face mitchell harassed her she was like oh um just keep your head down again a white woman aiding and abetting a white man in his disgusting ways like i understand a lot of times that's how women are told to navigate the world but if you see a woman standing up for herself don't come in and invalidate her and tell her oh he's like that with everyone well then that's an issue if he's treating everyone like this everyone should be whooping him should be beating him should be jumping him like Y'all have this issue that's been ongoing for who knows how long and y'all keep aiding and abetting him and perpetuating this disgusting rape culture behavior. And that's the issue. That's the issue. That's the issue. Okay. She couldn't even own up to her movement until the very end after somebody else faced the consequences of her actions. Her best friend ended up getting suspended for it 
because she because she her best friend was the one who like went to the office and authorized him as a actual school club because they weren't before meaning they could have get in trouble so the best friend went and did it and her name was on the list because she wasn't sure who moxie was even though she knew it was her best friend she didn't want to at her she didn't want to at vivian until vivian was ready and she even took the fall and got suspended for vivian and vivian was like oh but why did you not just da -da -da -da? why did you not just tell him you were moxie why you had your best friend lying and scheming for you that's the real question um she's scary she's a follower because like as much as she did a lot and feel and bring the girls in a united front she really didn't even feel that way until she seen somebody else a black woman had to be the catalyst for her to be like oh it's time for me to wake up and before anybody starts lucy herself did not start the movement because one she's new to the school two she's already seen the principal invalidate her you think a black girl is going to go up against a white woman in a power against a white man sexually harassing her let's be honest here y'all uh like and then on top of that her best friend was somebody that was very meek and very shy like she tried to support the movement but her mom was her mom she's her best friend is asian by the way and her and she's a first generation immigrant child like in america and basically like her mom like she tried to participate but her mom was like no put on a sweater because i don't want you getting in trouble i've done too much for you know to allow you to have the opportunities to go to school that you go to so the girl was just essentially trying to navigate her way in a majority white space where she's already a, a um has a strike against her for being the child of an immigrant like there's nothing wrong with being the child of an immigrant but you already know how america is sometimes so yeah so i'm like even your meek friend who wanted to support but couldn't due to her situation even she had more galls than vivian vivian was just so annoying sometimes like and then i understand that she was upset about whatever she was upset about but when she was at the dinner table with her mom and her mom's love interest, her like this new boyfriend that the mom met, for her to be like saying all this stuff about trying to basically ruin the mom's love life, I was like, are you serious right now? How long has your mother been single for you to be doing this? Like, you're disgusted. I understand you're upset. Sorry, my retainer. I understand you're upset, but there's no reason you should be taking that out on your mother. No, that's what? No, I can't. I can't. <laughs> she's so annoying that's literally what i wrote she's so annoying like half the time i'm just like are you serious right now you can't be serious whether it came to her mother lucy seth like i was just like and at one point i was like leave seth alone like y'all had some cute little moments but i'm like leave seth alone like seth is too good for you because miss ma'am miss ma'am seth was giving very much i he needed a better woman Hey, Seth. Seth is so cute. I hope his real life, like the actor who played him is like that too, because OMG. <sighs> um, and then I said she took too long to admit that she was Moxie. I felt like it was very anticlimactic because she didn't admit it until like the very end of the show. It was like 10, 13 minutes left. And I was just like, okay, now we don't see you, we don't see you facing any repercussions just down the third. But when it's the Asian girl, she's getting suspended. But when it's what's her face? Like, I know everybody, they had this whole, oh, you know how the I am Spartacus, everybody's saying I am Spartacus, they had a whole I am Moxie thing, that's not a third. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool, but we always know, or we usually know the first person to say it and admit it is the one that actually is that person. But, like, I was like, this is so anticlimactic to me. You waited too long to let them know who you were. You know what I'm saying? If you wanted to have some real stakes in the movie, she should have admitted it halfway through, and then she should have got suspended, and then we should have seen a turn of events there, but, like... You know, I'm not, I don't know what the what the director or scriptwriter was going for, but that's just how, like how I feel or whatever. Um, then we have Vivian's mom, who is Amy Poehler, I believe, the mom from Mean Girls and SNL or whatever. Um, she was just oblivious the whole time up until like the very end. And I was just kind of like, how are you so oblivious? Like, do you not check in to see what your daughter's doing every night when she leaves the house to go to this print shop? Are you not asking her what's in the box? What's the print? Like, I'm like, how are you this oblivious? because in the beginning it seemed like they had like a very close relationship like honestly like obviously there's still that whole mother daughter thing like i don't want to take a picture i don't want to do this mom but it seemed like they like it's just the two of them so they seem type of some type of clothes but apparently not especially with the fact that your daughter was doing this whole feminist movement while you yourself as a kid were like a whole alternative punk rebellion type being who she got the idea from I'm like how are you this oblivious of what is going on how are you this oblivious whatever then we have seth oh 
my goodness a film a film a film where the main love interest for our protagonist teenage girl is not a white man it was a gorgeous 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 asian man i don't know which i don't know which specific ethnicity he is they didn't specify from what i remember but he is gorgeous He's an ally. And when I say an ally, this man was right in the stars, wearing the tank tops, rock. He was doing everything. Even though the, the, the like magazine was geared towards the girls and telling the girls what to do, Seth was right behind him every step of the way. And then when he found out what's her face was Moxie, he not only kept the secret, he was helping her with the magazine. I said, oh, you care. And he would call out toxic behavior. He'd be like, like I, this man is a sweetheart. He's so cute and he's so caring. Like... And he wore my favorite color with in the tank top scene. He wore blue. And him and what's her face, Vivian were matching. I'm like, okay, that's a little cute, but I feel like you could do better. Me. But like, that's neither here nor there. Y'all already know. Y'all already know. Okay. And then he took her out on a date. Okay. They went to a funeral home. I was kind of like, Ugh, I don't know why. I don't like that. But like, they were still cute. And basically, he wanted to give her a kiss, but he didn't want to come out too strong. I'm like, <laughs> Oh, oh, you're so cute and so sweet. Like, I know that's like bare minimum, but I'm going to take what I can get. Okay, I'm going to take what I can get. You know what? I kind of say with fictional man, he should be the best he should be. But like, he was so cute. Like, he really didn't even have any flaws. Even when Vivian blew up on him and made him feel like sugar honey iced tea, he was still sweet about it. He understood she was going through a lot of internal turmoil, not being able to, to admit that she was doing, she was behind all this stuff. So he was still sweet about it, which is why he's, makes him an even better character like love to see it like her and then um they were in the car before a football game and they were kissing and making out and Vivian was like yeah we can do it now they're both versions by the way and Vivian's like oh we can do it now and he's kind of like ah, pause I want our first time to be special and I was like purr because a lot of people would have just did it in that car I don't know why Vivian was so eager to do it in that car why would you want your first time to be in a car like whatever girl um yeah i say he deserves a better girlfriend because she was so annoying at times like so annoying but i'm glad he called her out on her bs he was like i understand you're upset i understand you're going through um internal turmoil but do not use me as a punching bag and i said i know that's right because a lot of times love interests whether they're a boy or a girl will kind of just like take their significance others um punches at them or my non my non-binary babies or and would kind of just like take the punches their significant throw others would throw at them even though they didn't deserve it so i'm like yes call her out you ain't a punching bag period but yeah that's all i had to say about seth he was very cute very sweet i love seeing him he was just he did what he had to do. He did what he had to do. Like, he did what he had to do. Ow. Y'all just scratched myself. But yeah, that was just, they did that. Okay. Then I had next on my list, um, Viv I wrote her name as Vivian's friend because I didn't know her name at first. And I thought it was Christina and I was like, you're lame. And then I was like, oh shoot, it's Claudia. And like in the beginning, I'm like, Jesus, this girl has no spine. Um, but I did like the diversity of having her be, I, I assume she was Chinese because she was speaking Mandarin. If Mandarin is spoken in another country, please let me know. I don't want to be like insensitive or nothing. But like, yeah, I was like, I like that. She spoke Mandarin and I was like, oh, that's cool. I like that. I like that. And then um, she was kind of like hiding the fact that her mother wouldn't let her wear that tank top. So it made it seem like she wasn't in support of the whole feminism feminism movement going on so vivian kind of felt like oh you're my best friend why are you not supporting this if i'm supporting this and i'm just kind of like have you met your friend you would know if they would do this yes or no and then on top of that i don't know why she didn't just tell vivian that her mom is the one that told her to change like and honestly being me i would have just bought a different shirt but that's neither here nor there i completely understand her not wanting to disappoint her mom or disobey her mom i just feel like she should have told Vivian that so Vivian didn't you know take out her like extra anger on her because that wasn't needed like and then I don't like how she was making Vivian feel bad for having for making new friends within Lucy Caitlyn um uh and Maya and uh, Maya I was just like why are you mad your friend is making more friends like if she was completely neglecting you I could understand but Vivian was trying to include her because but my bad Cla Claudia was kind of just like pushing away and I'm like they're trying to include you and you're purposely distancing yourself, but then you're telling her she's a bad friend when you're the one distancing yourself. Ah, 
Don't do that. Don't do that. But she did redeem herself by one, getting the posters put back up that the principal was trying to take down because they weren't an official group. She did Y'all, not my chair trying to collapse on me. But she did redeem herself with um going to the front office and signing their club up to be a actual school club so that they wouldn't get in trouble. So I'm like, you redeem yourself. And then she, I liked her. She really grew on me. And then at the end, towards the end, when she called out Vivian, who came to her house after she got suspended, basically trying to chastise her. Why didn't you snitch on me? This and a third. And I'm like, she was like, I'm not a coward like you. And then she was like, my mother's an immigrant. We have a different living situation than you. All right. Like the way I have to move through the world is different than your white self. And I was like, call her out. Period. I'm like, I like how these characters are so self-aware. I like this for her. I mean, I, though in the beginning I was kind of like, girl. But it, at, seeing her at home life and then, you know, seeing her towards the end, I was like, okay, girl, you done grew on me. You done redeemed yourself. Period. But like, yeah, she... Vivian was a coward and I'm glad that um Claudia called her out on it like if you're gonna be about it be about it boo period and then we have Caitlin thank you girl for her telling the teacher that you know Caitlin was the girl with the um curvy ear bust and she called out the teacher for his you know discriminatory like his whole not wanting to support the movement but support the movement he was in and not in and then like she was like if you're in you're in if you're out you're out like if you support you support like stop with this wishy-washy and I was like period period wear whatever you want to wear miss girl as you should as you should as you should yeah and she's really pretty yeah and then the teacher he can also in the beginning he can ride like you're so wishy-washy like is you about it or is you not about it like stop with this i'm trying to appease my white the males in this class but the females like i don't know like i ain't trying to hear that you support or you don't support you support, like ugh. okay then we had the overall girls soccer team i feel like they deserve so much better like it's literally that's literally how high school is at my high school, the soccer team was winning bad to bad. Like, not even just girls soccer team, but, like, male, the male soccer team, bad to bad to bad. Male soccer team was on their stuff. But they always had to fundraise for new uniforms, fundraise for track suits, fundraise for everything. And football was getting everything handed to them. But they're not winning nothing. Some ain't adding up. And everybody always be like, oh, it's revenue, it's revenue, it's revenue, it's revenue. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like... Well, maybe if you put more effort into the soccer team, the volleyball team, the basketball team, maybe more revenue would come in if you actually put effort into one promoting their games like y'all do bas like ba um football games and two actually taking their issues serious when they come to y'all. But like they and then on top of that, it broke my heart that she did not get the scholarship. I was like, you can't. Oh, you can't be serious. You, 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 you can't be serious. Like, Kira deserved that scholarship. She was the better athlete with the winning team. Like, and we know that we know why they gave it to him. We know why we know why they gave it to him. Like, and that scene broke my heart, y'all. When I tell y'all, I was just devastated. I was just like, I was hoping they were going to divert. Like, I knew it was gonna happen, but I was kind of like hoping and wishing they were going to diverge from the norm and let her win. But honestly, they kind of needed her to lose to do that whole catalyst of what's her face, Vivian getting pissed off. So, but I hate that a black character had to suffer for a white character to step up their boldness or whatever the case may be. Like, and I love that the girls were so supportive of Kira, even before like the competition, like. Lucy and, and Amaya. Amaya was her wing woman, her hype man. By the way, Kira is um um Sydney from um 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 what's that thing called? That's a Raymond. But yeah, Amaya, I was just like, yes, her and Kira, this is magnifique because you never see in Netflix shows it's always a black girl and a white girl that are friends. We are never seeing black characters interact with each other and be so wholesome and everything. And I just love seeing it. And Amaya with her 40 Bro, let's go. Let's go. Netflix, you did a little something right. A little. I'm not gonna give you too much because then you're gonna get you won't start feeling yourself. But like, yes, yes. Also, um, random scenes and stuff. Um that date, why was it at a funeral home? Please, I like even when I'm watching it, I rewind it because I'm like, okay, why did he bring her here? And I'm like, I still not understanding like they're cute but that setting was so morbid i was just like 
but there was a, a quote i said it's my heart do you want it and i was like oh that's so cute it's so cute but the setting is still so morbid i was just like oh my god oh and then they were laying down in the casket first of all how the heck two of y'all laid down in a casket when it's made for one person but then i was just like why are you laying in a casket that's like one of my biggest ugh. like i could never like when people lay in caskets for shows i'm like no no that's like you're jinxing yourself to die on early death i'm like there's no way there's no way no i can't no it has to go but yeah as for dynamics let's transition into dynamics um i like that you know lucy empowered vivian to you know step up and do the right thing especially when she was trying to tell lucy to like oh calm down just keep your head down and you'll be fine and lucy was like uh no i wear my i and i walk with pride with my head up and i was like per i kind of just hate you needed someone to tell you to care about something when you should have already cared or whatever like it's just I don't know and then again using a black character as a catalyst for a white character's self-growth and personal journey it's a little ugh, it's a little played out like I felt like she should have found a different way maybe like and it like and then I'm like it could have been a good segue to use the mom honestly like have her mom be the reason she wanted to do this instead of Vivian being the instead of Lucy being the catalyst for Vivian it should have been Vivian's mom I don't even know her freaking name Amy Pollard like I think it's Amy Pollard if I'm wrong sue me um but yeah their dynamic was cute though after the fact i kind of enjoyed them i but i kind of you know i didn't like how vivian was snap snapped at lucy when lucy was like oh um claudia took one for the team by getting suspended instead of the whole club and like vivian's getting mad at lucy and stuff basically was like oh you're the new girl and i'm like ah, watch your mouth watch your mouth and in my head i'm like you're the reason she had to be suspended because you can't own up to your own uh movement like i'm like you're blaming lucy when it's your fault lucy don't know who moxie is so how she's supposed to help claudia she don't know who that is you knew who it was and it's you like i love here and amaya's relationship i loved it so so much like it made me like it made my heart feel good it made my heart a black girl it's like seeing your own freshman boss screen it was just sweet and wholesome and i enjoyed it vivian and seth's dynamic um it was cute in a lot of scenes kind of hated how vivian talked to him towards the end and then he kind of just forgave her without an actual real apology so i was just like eh, I, don't, I don't care for that um as for the mom and vivian the the, the, the beginning the beginning uh scene where the mom was like take a picture for me and she ended up taking the mom's picture pretending to be a selfie i was like i'm dead but like i wish we kind of like saw their relationship a little more it's kind of like the mom was really like oblivious with everything going on so it's kind of like it's eh, because i kind of like they talked about how the mom was rebellious when she was vivian's age so i was like it would have been really cool to see her helping vivian out with the whole movement but it's kind of like a the previous generation teaching the next but yeah um the principal's dynamic with lucy kind of really showed how a lot of older women normalize rape culture and perpetuate it onto younger girls and have and try to make them think that it's okay that it's easier to just caught up to a man despite her being the one in power and the the man the so-called man we're talking about is a student that you have power over like it's like even in powerful positions women are still supposed to like coddle men even though they're the ones in charge and i was like oh lord the patriarchy has her in a choke hold and it was also a good dynamic to show how like white women differ from black women when it comes to terms of femininity like femininity and feminism which is why a lot of black women don't consider themselves feminists they consider themselves womanist because feminism and its ideal state of how it got started was not inclusive was not in, did not include intersectionality for disabled black queer people so like yes yeah. so i really like seeing that although the she enraged me the principal enraged me it was a good way to show the dynamics between two different type of what well, two different types of generations and two different types of races despite them being the same gender and then um yeah that's kind of all i have to say for the dynamics um when vivian cared i mean cried i was just kind of like boo hoo hoo white women tears i don't care like you're crying because of your own actions like everything that happened is because of who you so my 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 you're feeling your comeuppance so. like <laughs> okay um and then towards the end here is the trigger warning for sexual assault if you do not want to hear it you can are free to click out now um here's what the sexual assault topic is about 
if you are if you want to i'll give you guys two or three seconds to click out okay um in the movie how moxie would always leave her letters in the bathroom or whatever somebody ends up leaving an anonymous note in the in the bathroom basically saying how they were raped by raped by mitchell the white guy who we said from the beginning that was harassing Lucy. Essentially, they were dating Mitchell um, and then prom night because the person's like a senior, I think, so junior year prom night. Um, Mitchell ended up raping them or whatever. Come to find out it was Emma. Emma is played by the actress um, from After. I don't know her name. Um, and she honestly, people talk, like had these rumors about how she had like the best, vagina or the best sex or how she's dating this older guy and this and the third but comes to find out she wasn't really dating anyone she was always shy around guys because of what happened to her and she came and spoke her truth towards the very end and they kind of just let her scream it out and I was like I love that for her because I know that could have been hard like you're supposed to be seen as this picture perfect girl in the school Miss Popular who was at once dating the quarterback who committed such a heinous crime they did pull Mitchell out of class but like they didn't really show us him getting his comeuppance so I kind of was like I wish we seen him getting at least put into a cop car like and honestly I know without actual evidence he's probably gonna get to walk free I know the movie is fake y'all but this is like a reflection of real life art is a reflection of life and it was just but you know they did that whole scene at the end where everybody like random people gets to come up and tell the truth as for that black girl that came up and said don't touch my hair you hurt her do not touch her hair do not touch a black woman's hair do not commentate on it unless you're gonna tell me it's pretty and that's it move on you after you say it's pretty that should be the only thing coming out of your mouth. It should never be, is that your real hair? Can I touch it? This, that, and the third. If you're not going to do it to your white women counterpart, don't do it to a black woman. Period. Or any other PLC. But especially black women. Because y'all love doing it as well as like for a petting zoo or something. So, yeah. Um, those were it. That was the end of my Moxie review. And we kept the video at a decent amount. Um, I just wanted to uh, say that the movie was actually not that bad. I kind of seen it blown up on TikTok. So I was like, okay, let me go watch. So I enjoyed it. Like, you know, it was cool. So, yeah. I appreciate the movie. It could have, there were some things that could have been better or whatever. I didn't talk about the dialogue. There was really nothing I could say about the dialogue. It kind of was your average dialogue script. There was nothing that really stuck out to me about the dialogue, at least in my notes. There was nothing that made me be like, uh, that's a little cringe or, uh, this could have been written better. So as for the dialogue, I'd say it's a pretty decent dialogue. Nothing special that stuck out to me and stuck with me or nothing too cringy that was like, whoa, I had to commentate on it. So yeah, with that being said, let me know in the comment section down below how you guys felt about the movie, your thoughts um, and opinions. If there's a movie or a show that's not too long, I want to do shows, but make sure it's like at least one, two, three seasons and no more because I have to watch the show in order to um, have an analysis on it. So yeah, um, you guys can go ahead and let me know in the comment section down below what you would like to see me do an announcement on. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.